Let's now describe the two notes Revolt guitar. The Revolt is an old analog amp simulator inspired by three iconic amps that are a Fender Bassman, a Marshall Plexi and a Soldano SLO 100. These amps in the Revolt are labeled as American Clean, British Crunch and Modern Lead. Each amp simulation has a dedicated foot switch to engage the channel. Pressing once more the foot switch, a booster circuit is engaged to further enhance the volume according to the boost knob. When you engage the boost, the valve color becomes red and when it's disengaged, it turns amber. In fact, this unit has a real 12AX7 preamp tube running at high voltage, which is supposed to provide us with some warmth and bite. Furthermore, the American Clean Channel has a two-band EQ with bass and treble, while the crunch and lead channels share a three-band EQ with bass, mid and treble. Revolt has an old analog cabinet simulation inspired by a Marshall 4x12 slash signature cabinet, which can be switched on or off with a dedicated knob. Switching it on, you can directly go to a mixing desk or FR-FR cabinet using the balance output of the Revolt. Buying the pedal, you also get a lifetime license of the Wall of Sound or the new Genome plugin with 10 downloadable cab sims from the two notes Dean IR cabinet collection. These cab sims have a value of around 100 bucks and can be used in conjunction with the Wall of Sound or Genome plugin. You can use these IRs basically recording the unit without the cab sim and then adding the cabinet and mic simulation in your DO with the Wolo Sound plugin, as I was saying. As regards the IO, the pedal has a guitar in, an effect loop which also allows us to connect the unit with our amp with the four cable method using the unit with the so called hybrid mode which allows us to blend the color of the Revolt preamp with the power amp stage of our amplifier. There are both mono balanced and unbalanced outputs and the unit also features MIDI in and out with MIDI jacks. And then there is an aux in and an earphone out. So a pretty rich set of connectivity features, I would say. As you may notice, the device does not have any digital or USB plug. In fact, it cannot be used as an audio interface. I think in order to preserve the whole analog circuitry of the Revolt. Thus, the philosophy here is to provide us with a full analog device without any digital converter or digital circuit more in general. This approach has pros and cons. For instance, you are gonna have a basically inexistent latency. On the other hand, of course, you cannot use this device as an audio interface. The unit comes with only one cabinet simulation included inside the pedal that is all analog, therefore, if you want to have more options, I mean more cabinets at your disposal, you can use the Revolt together with the Cab M or any other cabinet sim pedal. While when you are at home and you want to record, you just deactivate the Cab sim and then you can use your favorite DO plugin. The unit runs at 12 volts and 600 milliamperes. You can see the dimensions in the screen and it weighs 750 grams. The price is 399 bucks, which is a pretty fair price, I think, considering what this unit has to offer. Let's now hear some more sounds.
finite consideration CR. And please notice that these are going to be my personal opinions for my specific use case. And of course, you may not agree with me. And this is totally fine. Furthermore, I have purchased this unit with my own money. Therefore, I'm free to tell you whatever I want. Let's start from the pros. Well, first of all, this is a total analog device that for someone who is very sensible to latency, assure zero gap between the time you hit the note and the time you hear it. Nowadays, there are many amp modeling pedal boards who has solved this issue with latency time around one millisecond, like the Boss GX100 or the new XMG400. In any case, an all analog device assure a very comfortable playing in terms of latency. Second, the choice of amp is just right. I mean, you have a bass mount, which is amazing for clean tones, or a Marshall for edge of the breakup crunches, or the Soldano for lead tones. This is perfect, in my opinion, for rock and hard rock tones, which, as you know, perfectly fits my playing style. Third, I would mention that it sounds really nice. I noticed that especially the attack of the note really recall me a tube amp. I mean, you clearly hear how to say the heaviness of your pick when you push strong, which is pretty amazing. In terms of structure of the distortion, it is pretty nice, but I didn't notice any specific difference comparing it to, for instance, what I can get from a modern amp modeling pedal board. Obviously, the pedal also breaks up and cleans up very well according to how hard or soft you play the string, but uh, once more, I didn't notice specific difference with what you are gonna be able to obtain with the amp modeling pedal boards. Where, on the other hand, the attack of the note was something pretty special in this pedal, as I said previously. Another pro is that this is a perfect platform in order to build an ampless pedal board around it. Thanks to its MIDI connections, to the three channels, etc., it can really be the center point of a wall analog pedal board. That, by the way, is something I want to build around this pedal pretty soon. The last pro I would mention is the price. I mean, 399 is a pretty good price. If you think that a pedal like the Universal Audio Dream 65 is priced at the same price and you get basically only one amp without MIDI connectivity. Let's now discuss about the cons. First of all, I would mention that the XLR out is really hot. I mean, with the clean part of the demo song, which has some heavy strumming, keeping the volume pretty low, I was struggling not to make my audio interface to clip. I mean, I use pretty professional audio gear. For instance, I have an API 512 Pre and an Apollo X16. And as I was saying, basically the Pre the preamp was at a zero volume, but still I had to pay attention not to push too strongly the strings, which is uh, kind of strange. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I was still able to record the tracks, but as I was saying, I was playing carefully. On the other hand, for the solo parts, I didn't notice any problem. This is actually the only cons that I have experienced Okay, you cannot use this device as an audio interface, but honestly, I agree with the two notes philosophy here. I mean, this is a totally analog device with a pure analog circuitry, therefore you need to pair it with your audio interface. All in all, I'm very happy with this device. This is an almost perfect pedal to build an ampless pedal board with all the analog pedals we love. And, uh, Actually, it perfectly matches my playing style, as I said previously. So, I would say that if you are an old analog player which wants to build an ampless pedal board, this is highly recommended. By the way, I didn't compare it directly to my real tube amps in this video, as honestly I didn't feel the need, as I was really enjoying the pedal. But please let me know if you want a dedicated video where we can compare the revolt to its 
real tube amps counterparts so that we can verify how close it is, for instance, to a real Soldano. And now it's your turn. What do you think about this pedal? Would you buy it over an amp modeling pedal board? Why? Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below. We have now reached the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell and leave a thumb up as it would be of great help. If you're interested in my IRs, you can check out the link in the card above or description below where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.